In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, sisters. I'm Father Bob Rossi, a crozier from Onamia. Happy to be celebrating with you today. As we gather around the table, we are uh, committed to the gospel and wish to remain so. But our failings are also evident to us, our weaknesses, our sin. In preparation uh, for our celebration, let us first, in all humility, ask God's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Be present to your family, O Lord, we pray, and graciously ensure that those you have endowed with the grace of faith an eternal share in the resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout followers buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church, entering house after house and dragging out men and women. He handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. This was the great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of God's name. Proclaim God's glorious praise. Say to the Lord, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of the Lord. God's deeds are on our behalf are wondrous. Our God has changed the sea into dry land. Through the rivers they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in God, who rules by might forever. 
Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Those who believe in the Son has eternal life, and I shall raise them up on the last day, says the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what was given me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of the one who sent me, that those who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise them on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter, sisters. Happy Easter, Simon, Peter, James, and John, as they push you out of the synagogues. Happy Easter, you Jerusalem Christians who have to scatter to avoid being hurt. Happy Easter to you, Stephen while they stone you to death. Happy Easter to you families, believing families, as they enter your houses and force you into the streets. Happy Easter to everyone who gets caught and put in prison. Happy Easter. Well, that dissonance is disturbing for us, isn't it? That this glorious feast day, this glorious reality of our Christian community and its faith, the redeeming power of Jesus' death and resurrection, the happy Easter for all of us, should be accompanied by these kinds of struggles and difficulties and sufferings precisely because he is risen 
and we say it out loud. Well, my dear sisters, this reality is not just that of that early community. It's really the reality of all of us and of all of our communities, isn't it? I mean, you and I have professed faith in the Lord Jesus, the giver of life, the bread of life. Those of us who will never be thirsty again, the scripture says, we have professed that faith in confidence and yet all of us must go through troubles and trials because of the faith. Many of us have spent our lives evangelizing the peoples in various ways. And yet here many of us sit in wheelchairs, our health failing, facing the reality of death. All of us in our lives have got to face uh, disturbances in our communities, conflict, disagreements that sometimes tear us apart. We are Christian communities, and yet it happens to us. Inside, sometimes we wonder, don't we, about it all, about God, about Christ. You see, happy Easter is more than just happy. But uh, we have faced all of this and will continue to face it, hearing the words of Jesus in the gospel today. I will not lose any of the disciples. Amazing, isn't it? I will not lose any of the disciples because my father won't see them lost. Well, that's what keeps us going, isn't it? That's what allowed Peter, James, and John to continue preaching. That's what allowed those Christian families in Jerusalem to maintain their faith, come back to it, live it out. That's what supported Stephen as he faced the rocks coming at him. And that's what uh, allowed uh, those early Christians to put up with Saul, throwing them out of their homes and putting them in prison. See, what allows us to endure It is that deep conviction placed in us by the Spirit of God. Jesus is indeed risen. Jesus is indeed Lord. Jesus will not lose any of us. And in the end, we shall rise like him. That's what makes Easter happy for us. We go beyond the Sunday festivity we live our lives in the world facing the great challenges we have because we know that not one of us will be lost to Christ. Well, I think that's good news, isn't it? Good news. Uh, not just for ourselves, but also good news for those young catechumens, the, the people who have come into the church recently. It's uh, good news for Christians all over the world facing violence and terrorism, even violence, church people against church people. You know, what, what sustains that? What allows us to put up with it, and not just to put up with it, but, but to live beyond it, what allows that? Jesus will not lose one of his disciples. 
and in the end, we shall rise as he has risen. Sisters, this is what we're celebrating at the table today. This is not just another ritual uh, performance, another uh, religious obligation of our communities, even obligations that we've taken on ourselves personally. It's not just that. This is the people of God who face the difficulties of their profession of faith. The people of God who live it out daily in their lives, and we are that people. We are gathered at this table to say thank you, to remember Jesus and his words to us, to be in communion with him here again today and with one another, and to hear and see the hope revived in us. One day, we shall rise. My dear sisters, we speak with God now as his people. We speak to God about all those who are suffering, who are touched by the darkness of our world and will continue to be touched by it until he comes again. We pray for them as we pray for ourselves. First for our church, that we might remain firm, stand fast, remain vigorous for the proclamation of the gospel to bring the good news to the others, which we have received, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the powers of this world, the legislators, the executives, the presidents, the parliamentarians, the kings, the justices, that all of them might know the deep truth about God's love for these people they serve and act like it. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for men and women and children throughout the earth who plod along, who perhaps have lost faith that heaven cares. Let us pray for people who suffer pain in their bodies, in their minds, in their spirits. Pray for all those who feel the despair of their circumstances, those experiencing violence and bloodshed. We pray to the Lord. And for ourselves, for God's uh, continuing encouragement among us, despite the terrible challenges we see around us and within us and in our communities, we ask the Lord to keep us ever mindful of his word. We pray to the Lord. And we ask now for other things we need. We thank you, Father, for bringing us here to this oasis of life and hope for us. Thank you for this Eucharistic table we will sing your praises here. We'll, we'll, we will remember the great word you have spoken to us in Jesus. We will re-pledge ourselves here to it all. 
Enable us. Encourage us. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, dear sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, A universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. 
Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And drink this cup. We proclaim you, death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways in faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Amen, we sing, sisters. Amen to the great kingdom of Jesus Christ. Present, but not yet in its fullness among us. With great confidence, let's pray to our Father. Let's sing the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from... Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of our Lord be with you always. Let us greet one another in peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wonderful to celebrate together this uh, great mystery. Thank you for that. We go now in Christ's peace. Thank you.